This is the Geek Case G4 and while setting it up, I made a rookie mistake and that is I did not power up the system to check that it's actually working before fully assembling it. Hi everyone, I'm Goldfries and this video will be looking at the detail of this case and I'll be sharing to you what happened. You know what I shared just now about not powering it up. Well, this is this case is something that will how you say emphasize on the importance of testing your system before powering up. Well, it's not just for small systems like this, but let's say you are running custom water loop, then yes, do remember to power up before assembling. So let's head over to the overhead camera. So this is the Geekcase G4, and since I'm showing you the top-down view, let's start with the top here, which is the handle. Now as you can see, the handle is not in parallel with the with the lines, everything itself. Why it is not parallel? Well, it is, I would say, the flaw in the design. They could have designed it such a way that it fits exactly the same line in the hole, based on the holes, but they did not. And this is the best I can find to get it in place. Kind of sucks because my OCD definitely does not like this kind of arrangement. So yeah, basically that's that for the top. Now let's look at the front. The front comes with just one power button. The underside, pretty much like all the other geek cases you've seen before, this kind of feet and with a single 92mm fan support at the, at the bottom. And then that's the rear over here, which you can expect. This is pretty much like the Geek, geek um, let's say G1 and the C2 models, that kind of single frame with panels. And speaking of the panels, the panels are held on to the case itself magnetically. So let's start with the chamber that holds the motherboard. Opening up. So as you can see over here, I'm going to just put the big panel over here. Right, standard setup, flex power supply. I'm using a modular cable flex power supply. ITX motherboard, ASRock B550M, ITX AC, uh, Thermorite XP90, low profile cooler, dim. That's pretty much it, nothing much to talk about really. But I'll go into more detail on something else later. So it looks easy to assemble, but it is not as easy as it seems because um, I pretty much had to dismantle the the entire thing just to able to slot everything in. We start off with the power supply, then to get the case, this uh, the motherboard in. Now, if you go with a simple setup where it's just a motherboard and got two SSD cooler, it is just fine. But I went a little bit further in my setup a little bit more detail in my setup because I tried to use a, this uh, drive a two and a half inch drive now this is where things get complicated you see in order to um, to have the drive in place you need to secure it from the other side that's where the motherboard is so before you have the motherboard on you need to mount the drives first and then only you mount the motherboard and every other thing. So quite some work on my side to get the cables routed. I see I cable tie it over here. And then we have, because this is a two and a half inch drive, there's a SATA power and the SATA data cable. And to make things more complex, this is a T-Force Delta Max drive. So it has USB powered RGB lights. And speaking of which, let's try to power on. I have a, I have a power cable over here. We are going to connect. And as you can see, it lit up. See? Lights on, beautiful SSD. I'm just showing you that it can be done even with... I have literally the unnecessary cable for the color, just for showcase purpose. When you cover up, there's nothing much for anyone to see really. So yeah, and you can see that I'm tilting it around from time to time because I just want to show the, it's reflective. I'll, you see, turning it this way, then it does not bounce the light from the soft box. 
and um, let's flip to the other side as you can see I'm also using a T-Force RAM so it is nicely lit okay power on it'll be like this okay let's turn it off I'm gonna flip this case around a bit now why did I mention about earlier about this uh, powering on to test the system before you get everything into place because this setup is tedious and when I tried to power on I couldn't power it on it's um, something that is so daunting to uh, to I would say to fix I, of course removing the the memory to to troubleshoot is the simple part but what if I want to remove the CPU like unlatch it remove place it back to see if any, any problem the, well the problem is in the setup itself because you see this uh, Thermorite ASP90 here it is mounted by the screw mounts down here you can access two but you cannot access the other two because it is under the SSD this means that in order to remove the SSD I have to remove the board and that makes the whole setup a lot more complex uh, or more like that let's just say that makes the whole troubleshooting process a lot more complex which is why the troubleshoot did not was not completed at all and I decided to proceed with the review as it is initially I wanted to test the the, the cool, cooling capacity I'm running a Ryzen 5 5600G with uh, this I just want to test how this like performance as it is and those and the performance with the perforated um, panel over here but looks like it's too much effort just to review a case you can just assume that the temperature will be better or worse or little to no difference depending on the CPU you are using you might be using a 3200G on a say an older ITX motherboard something a less power draw you could be using a 5700G so it, everything can be different and it does support fan of which from my experience does not do much you can put 92 millimeter, millimeter fans on the top and the bottom it's entirely up to you but in my case I don't think it's necessary but yeah that's pretty much the my thoughts um, or more like what I want to share to you about this whole setup process of this thing this so setting up this like what I said if it is just a flex power supply motherboard heatsink memory it's okay it's just that I got a little ambitious I wanted to, I wanted to show the this other chamber over here okay you can even mount another drive over here if you want to I just want to showcase um, the chamber what you can fit and in doing so I got into this difficulty of which I cannot troubleshoot at all without pretty much dis disassembling the whole thing now disassembling the whole thing is a reversal of the assembly process of which you will have to remove everything including the cables that I have Ooh, you can see I'm looking at it why this is the, the who sound because when I think of the what I went through to set up everything to route all the cables it was a daunting process and I would really hate to undo it just to troubleshoot and do it all over again because it is really that daunting a process and pretty much that's it so this is my experience with the case I like the case if you are ex familiar with uh, geeks um, build quality you know what you're getting small size and I'm going to show the specs on screen right now so it's a sub 5 liter specifically 4.8 liter with the other dimensions there but seriously you do not look, need to look at all the other dimensions simply because from this video alone you should know what you're getting flex power supply ITX motherboard low profile cooler and your memory and it's done you cannot go wrong with this setup at all right unless um, you're more ambitious or as ambitious as I am you want to have more drives well to have two and a half inch and a three and a half inch drives you are dealing with two SATA connect SATA power connection and two SATA power cables just keep that in mind that this will affect your entire assembly process where you will have to ensure that the cables are in place does not at least in such a way that it does not 
apply pressure to this this uh, magnetically secured panel so that it does not pop off or more like at least it can stay on all right that's all for this um this view the, the view from the overhead camera all right with that done the geek case g4 it retails at about 80 us it's a nice case although um, one might argue that that's a lot to pay for something of this size but i say well that's the itx tax <laughs> so overall still a good case and if you're looking for something portable and not requiring a graphics card then this might be the case for you and that's all for this one thanks for watching guys and i'll see you in the next one bye bye